Welcome to another episode of Sup Nerd on Air. I'm your host, Kim. And today we're uh, joined by Ted here and Victoria. Victoria Cheng. Cheng. There we go. And today we're going to be talking about video game adaptations and specifically what that media looks like when it's translated into a movie. Yeah. They're always really good. Like, I really enjoy seeing video games in a movie <laughs> Every single movie on a video game is brilliant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, they do ex- exist. Sarcasm aside, I think what we're going to be talking about is uh, they're typically not so great. Mm. Well, there's a bit of a curse, right? There's a bit of a stigma when it comes to video game adaptations. I think everyone cringes a little bit inside when they see the news about a new movie based on a video game property. Why? Why do you think that is? Yeah, well, I mean, like, just backtracking to why do these exist in the first place? Like, what is the popularity of them? Like, why would anybody want a video game uh, movie when you can just go play the game? Like, is that something that is... Well, it's obviously there's money to be made. Mm. And I think a lot of the guiding decisions, you see something blow up on in the interactive game space and then people are like, oh, how, how can we... How can we expand this into something else of the revenue streams? I think that's a really good question, though. Like, why would you bother watching the movie? I think when Warcraft came out, I was really mm. excited. Yeah. And you know, there's a lot of lore behind Warcraft. So thinking, you know, the movie's going to be awesome. It's going to be expansion of this universe or the universe come to life. Almost like, why would you make a movie from a book? Yeah. Right? It's yeah. an expansion of that or maybe a visual interpretation of it. But often what ends up happening is whoever ends up making the movie doesn't really understand the game. And if you don't understand the game, the gamers are never going to appreciate the movie because they it's a, it's like anything else when a non-gamer touches something in the gaming universe, you know. Yeah. So I think that applies to movies too. There's definitely like that fan service element. And we've, we've talked about before, like the idea of if you generate a movie from a game, who are you making it for? I think the, the, the audience is very, needs to be thought very deliberately because you can have a, a movie that is very true to the game but then you realize that it alienates the general population because you're making the the movie so that you please the gamers. So, like Mortal Kombat's a great example. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, we love Mortal Kombat, but I think if you if you don't you're not into Mortal Kombat, you would be like, what Confusing. the hell is this yeah, movie? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were a fan of WoW. Yeah. And then you watched Warcraft. Yeah. You watched it pretty early as well, right? Because why, so why are you bringing that up so much? Why are you bringing that up? Somebody so took you. <laughs> Somebody took you to, to, to watch it really early. Yeah, it was early. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you think it'd be a great date idea, but it ended up being kind of shit because it would be shit. <laughs> but like, as a, as a fan of, of the IP, did you enjoy the movie? Like, did you enjoy the nods? Did, did you think it was for you or did you think they kind of watered it down for the general the channel? Okay, when I first watched it. It was amazing. I remember being super annoyed with it. I didn't like it. I was like, they did Stormwind all wrong. Everything was just, it just felt all wrong. I liked how they created the orcs, actually. I like the art, the CGI for yeah, the yeah, orcs. Yeah. I thought that was yeah. pretty cool. That's, that's, that's still, as well, right? That's still yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's still good. Actually, but when I rewatch it now, I appreciate it more. And I don't know if it's because I've gotten more mellow or because my standards have dropped so much because there's been so many bad game related movies and I'm like you know what maybe Warcraft wasn't so bad um but I remember back then being super disappointed but we've also come a really long way where I think you know there are interpretations of the game that are much better now um and it's more again more true to the original narrative or the story of of what the original game intended like what what do you mean by different um like like books or oh yes mix or? so like the last of us okay would oh right okay would sorry, be yeah. you know it's not a movie but it's a show that they end up making and it was really close to the game adaptation we well, could also argue that games have evolved a lot too that a lot of the cut scene some people even argue it's like they just took the cut scenes and made it into a movie form but um, even then they took some liberties on their own and and changed it a little bit and it, but it was still part of the original last of us universe so it didn't feel like a deviation but almost like an alternate ending that also could have the, happened. the tone i think last of us is a really good example because 
the amount of cinematic work that had already been put into it was kind of probably unparalleled when it comes to games. You know, Naughty Dog is a very attention to detail about narrative driven experiences. Um, so the tone, like if you watched the the TV show or you played the game, you'll feel the same tone all the way through. I think that's that was always really nice. Um, and I think a challenge comparing that to say World of Warcraft, The Last of Us has like one narrative and sure there's like little small stories they explored around it that weren't explored in the game originally, but the, the core narrative was there, whereas World of Warcraft is huge as well. And I think Dungeons and Dragons is another really good example of a movie that, that was good. Yeah, but and but why was that good? Because again, like we, I don't play Dungeons and Dragons, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, Chris Pine, wow. Yeah. Because <laughs> Chris Pine, <laughs> Chris Pine, wow. Yeah, wow, wow. <laughs> Give me a Chris, Chris I'm happy. Chris yeah. Pine melting <laughs> like yeah. that. Yeah, but uh, I think that if you kind of look at, I, I, I guess video games and 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 games that have a narrative like like Last of Us, mm. they, they've got a story to tell. Mm. World of Warcraft has that, but it's also so expensive. It's huge. I think D and D, what they could do, they could build off things that people recognize as Dungeons and Dragons, like the spells, yeah. Dungeons, the Dragons. Yeah. Um, but then tell their own little story within that. And and that's like the essence of what D and D actually playing D and D is all about. Yeah. You're creating your own stories. So they had that foundation to be able to, I guess, yeah. talk about yeah. yeah. I do wonder if people don't have inclination towards games or, you know, geeky stuff liked the D&D movie. They might have not liked it. I don't know what the reviews were like, but I know... Critically, it was very good. Really? Yeah, everyone was like, this is, this sounds super nerdy and camp, but it was well written. It was funny. And you could watch it without feeling as though you were missing out for being a non-fan. And I think like, because... I think at the moment you start dropping like D and D things in, it can be very like polarizing. You're yeah. Like, oh, like I don't identify exactly. with this because I don't know what's going on. Whereas I go in like completely green. I thought it was quite good. So critically, yeah, it's it's been well received. Yeah. I, that might be it, actually, because there were references to D and D, and there were actually some reference even in Arcane. Um, speaking of yeah. great, great adaptations. adaptations. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I knew just, we even said this, watching it, we were like, I know that's a reference to something and I don't know what that mm, reference is. And it yeah. like annoyed me a little, like, oh crap, I wish I actually played a little bit more League. But the thing is, it does the fan service to the people who appreciate it. Yeah. But then I still loved it even as a non yeah, exactly. It doesn't polarize you if you don't have the knowledge. I think that's the best kind of like multi, like multi-medium experience is when you're learning things about a property that you don't know about but just because you haven't watched every other part of it or experienced every single game you don't feel like that's detracting from from the overall experience yeah and and arcane's a good example of a game that doesn't necessarily have a lot of a narrative to it i mean every every character in in league has has their own backstory but at the end of the day they told a completely different like uh story and and narrative to to the game and the game's a MOBA, you know, it's, yeah, it's yeah. pretty easy to, to kind of pick up and play and there's no story in it. There's, oh man, you've probably offended a whole bunch of legal, there's so much lore. Uh. <laughs> but you're right, there's no kind of singular narrative, like narrative driven games like The Last of Us or Ghost of Tsushima and unlike a lot of PlayStation exclusives or even God of War, which I hear they might be making a movie of too. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's going to be awesome. But I think at the heart of it, it might just be a good story i think there is the mortal yeah. combat formula where it's like huge fan service to fans of yeah, the game yeah pretty but much made for fans yeah. yeah who just want to see fatalities on screen i mean again that has a ton of backstory every character has yeah. a ton of backstory yeah. Yeah, i know um, you, you're very it, familiar yeah well i mean it just makes sense yeah. that like oh yeah you know i mean if they could do it with arcane why was mortal combat so much less, you know, and they've been trying to make fighting game I've, movies. I, so for a this while. is my because I watched the the recent Mortal Kombat. I feel like mm. there was too much emphasis on ticking all the boxes of the universe, whereas Arcane was focused more on human stories. And I feel like that that is probably the distinction because Mortal Kombat was a good movie. Like I think for the fans who who wanted to see it, and they're like, "This is a great movie." Um, whereas again, it's that how much do you appease the fans versus creating stories that are, are easy to 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 access from from more walks of life i think you're right if they just made a movie about scorpion like that would have been great do, do that would have been enough I would, yeah <laughs> if there was like a like a like a 
um, what was the X Men? Jeez, Wolverine. Yeah, Wolverine. Logan. If they had like a Logan story about Scorpion, that would be pretty interesting because then you're like, okay, I'm not having to worry about understanding all of these because there's a huge cast I think in Mortal Kombat mm. as well. Um, and I feel like I just wasn't following along enough. Do you think it's a it's a format thing? You know, like movies versus TV shows because TV shows obviously you've got a lot longer. To, to tell the story. Oh, I could talk a lot. Yeah. yeah. Just Oppenheimer on this. Uh, yeah. But the idea of, yeah, how much can you compact? Mm, if you're trying so to maybe tell... they were trying to condense, yeah, like you said, yeah. you know, if it was just one character, yeah. but maybe they were trying to condense a little bit too much into yeah. that thing. But, I mean, having said that, we've now just witnessed Gran Turismo and you guys... Speaking of... You guys about watched it. Games that have, like, not much universe inside, right? Yeah. This is literally... I mean, even in the movie... They were like, this isn't a game, this is a simulator. Um, but yeah, Vic, we went along to that. I really love the movie. Um, as you guys might know, I was blessed with the opportunity to actually see the set, the live set over in uh, Hungary, Budapest, which is where they filmed it. And to see it, I wasn't sure how it would end up on the big screen. I was really touched by it. I had to leave early and you were sitting right next to me and you're like, I thought you said you were going to leave. Like, I do. I need to like go home and walk the dogs. So I'm like, this is so good. This is, like, you even know how it ends because it's based on a true story. And I met the freaking guy yeah. over in Budapest. Um, and I was, we were thinking about like, what makes this movie so riveting? Is it just because it's based on a true story? Um, is it just because it's so inspiring? It's a, you know, gamer, a quick backstory this is a guy who used to play Gran Turismo on a simulator he started on a PlayStation went to a simulator and then he was so good on the leaderboards they invited him to go to GT Academy where they trained up gamers to potentially become real life race car drivers for Nissan and um spoiler he becomes a real life professional race car driver for the British yeah, team yeah he podium like Le Mans and things like he he did I I think that's the big thing is like this is kind of like a Tetris, you know, the Tetris movie. Mm. It's it's a story about the game and the game's impact on culture. Yeah, yeah. Without it being a story, in it's a story involving the game, less about a story that is the game. Yeah, yeah. Because you can imagine, imagine if they had a game, like a, uh, imagine if they had a movie about the being inside the GT mm. universe. I don't think that. I mean, it would be interesting, It'd just right? be a racing movie. Yeah, but uh, it's literally a simulator. It's not even a game, right? So it's all about... It's Fast and Furious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that totally wouldn't even be there. Yeah. Um, but what's interesting about... And, you know, like, Sony is not paying us to say this. No. They're, they're not paying us to review. But, like, critically, it's an interesting film because they pay respect to the property mm. of GT. So if you're a GT fan, you'll enjoy this. Um and they, they, they go behind the scenes and you, you see like the developers or like the developers. Um, but there is a real human story behind the whole thing. And that story, the fact that it's based on a real narrative, like this happened in real life is, is incredible because it's really a sports movie. Mm. It, yeah, that's effectively what it is. It's a very inspiring movie. There are a lot of moments that I think anyone could relate to, not necessarily just gamers, but it definitely it was, I, I walked out of that movie of like that was like an anthem movie for gamers. Definitely set up like the the anti. I don't know if you even if you see the trailers and David Harborn's character, he's kind of like you know they will hate you like you're just a gamer. Um, but that is something that is I think as a gamer you kind of watch this and you're like yeah I, I can feel that um, and it works so well. And his parents is his father doubting him. His father having been an athlete himself. So again, these are common themes against you know naysayers people who doubt a person who wants to chase their dreams um and now it just makes it so cool is because i can't believe this is, is something that is true we keep saying this because i can't believe this gamer actually became a race car driver um he allegedly doesn't like being called a gamer even he's like i'm a sim race car driver um but seeing that come to life i think what was so good about it was like it can't be about Gran Turismo itself. It's the story that's behind it, and I think that's sort of the crux of any movie, right? It's the story. Yeah, yeah. It it kind but, of seems dumb. Like imagine a you know a, a movie about a kid who plays Call of Duty. 
and goes to the champion. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. And I think there's this this element of like we're talking meta. Um, you know, we kind of see that as a bit of a like a fan journey, right? Like the wish fulfillment. Like, yes, this game is gonna eventually pay up. And even in the story they explore that. So I think as a gamer, that you get told, like, you're wasting your time. This isn't gonna ever happen. Um, the fact that the movie explores that, but then also the payoff is, you know, a, a real dude in the world, like the real world, managed to turn this into a career and was validated. It's an easy win for Sony because they, they say, oh, wow, the simulator of GT is accurate enough that these people can compete in real cars. That's a great, like, it's a perfect marriage. Mm. Um, and it's a great story. It's a great human story at the end of the day. Well, was there room for them to mess up? Could they have possibly fucked this up, you know? It it was. It's a good story, and is that why the movie is good? We're saying like you have to have a good story for a good movie, but could they have? Yeah, absolutely. This up? Oh yeah, I think so. I think it would be very easy to go into like video game mode, right? Um, and you know, just bring all the all the special effects going in, and he's playing the game, and like you're ticking the boxes for the GT fans. They're like, yeah, I recognize all of this, but I think what was interesting about you know hearing from the director Neil Blomkoff. He was very focused on practical. Like some of the driving sequences are the best that I've ever seen in any. And then they're like the real FPV drone footage, real cockpit footage. I didn't know it was Neil Blomkamp. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like Neil a- Blomkamp, the fact that he's behind this one is like super exciting because he is, you know, he's such a legend, I think. District 9, Elysium. Um, he, he really kind of happy. You chappy, yeah, as well. He really gets like that side like that the 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 subculture of of geek and i think that he represents like the other side with david harborn as this great foil he's so good um but yeah it it really is a real story um that happens to use a video game as a kind of a a narrative tool like a, a vehicle almost because i mean it is, it is a vehicle yeah, yeah it oh my god yeah <laughs> you're so funny my bad um uh, yeah but yeah i mean like and and so with that like is it really a video game um movie and this is what i i, I wonder like coming back to the first question are video game movies bad i think it really depends on are you doing like an uncharted where you're trying to tell a narrative within a universe poorly dungeons and dragons where you have a huge universe and you tell your own story great or GT, or Mortal Kombat. Like, there's so many different answers. Is it? I mean, it is a video game. It's it's a it's a movie based on a video game. Let's so see. arguably, it's a video game movie. Let's talk about Uncharted, actually. So I didn't actually finish the games. Um, and you have Tom Holland in there. Yeah. Um, the story was very mediocre. I don't remember what happens. I just remember he was like a bartender, and then he started jumping out of airplanes. Yeah. Um, and Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. So how do you screw something like that up? Well, no, like, okay, like, backing they just, up. Should they because... just have followed the game narrative? <laughs> no, but backing up. Exactly. And the thing is, the game narrative, it spanned so much cool stuff. Yeah. It's basically yeah. Tomb Raider on crack, in, yeah. in, in, in yeah. my humble opinion. And, yeah. and I'm obviously a huge fan. And again, um, like early Naughty Dog, like heavy cinematic. Yeah, like, you know, and the, then... all the 10 posts were there. Yeah. But like when it boiled down to like the movie and, and realizing it's kind of a prequel it's tom holland and and it felt like they didn't need to do that they they had the base they had the foundation they they, they could have you know rehashed one of the the uncharted like uh plot lines mm. or they could have come up with something new yep. but you know of that same um you know ilk i don't know why they went in the direction that they did you know yeah. was it the star power it definitely wasn't pleasing fans yeah um, yeah it's otherwise just a bland, you know, indie Indiana Jones adventure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the Wish dot com version of exactly. Yeah, we have indie at home. Do you feel the same about Tomb Raider movies? There are like so many of them at this point. Uh, well, I was kind of young when I was yeah when the Angelina Jolie one there came was out. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. I didn't watch that. Yeah, was it oh. good? Did uh, you like I it? I actually am okay with all the Tomb Raider movies. Mm. They're not necessarily memorable, but I think that was They're more fun. from the point of view of having like a, a female Indiana Jones on yeah, the screen. Yeah, like yeah. that was always cool. So but even then, like Angelina Jolie, they kind of very much sexed her up. I mean, but so did the game. To, Tomb Raider. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, back in the day, right? Were like giant. Yeah, exactly. it was accurate to the game. <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> But I definitely think like the Alicia Vikander is, you know, the the new basically I guess on the reboot of Lara Croft, right? With the recent Rise of Tomb Raider, the the, the newish trilogy. Yeah. Um 
Yeah, I mean, it was a good, it was a fun movie. Like, it was a fun adventure movie that had a bit more maturity than obviously the the popcorn esque earlier Tomb Raiders. But again, this wasn't very memorable. But I mean, is Tomb Raider memorable as a game anyway, storyline wise? Not necessarily. I don't think it's like. I, I can think of a whole bunch of games that where storyline isn't necessarily memorable. Right. It's more about the action. Yeah. So okay, so Uncharted. Uh, sorry to bring it back to Uncharted, but again, you know, it, it's the the storyline's not as memorable. It's the same thing. He has to steal something or whatever. But what stuck in my head was the cinematic, like, uh, not not universe, but the world that they built yeah. and specific moments in the game where you're playing. And, and it just felt like a movie. Oh, yeah. you know? And it like felt like time put you in a movie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, that was something cool. That's and why that even, even that Mission Impossible, like Christopher McQuarrie is like, yeah, like leaning on those set pieces from Uncharted because Uncharted set such a high standard right. for those action set pieces. They basically had a formula ready for exactly. these movie makers. It's a template, yeah. Whereas... Yeah. I think what Arcane did was amazing. Like you said, there was no, you know, storyline to really copy from. They, they borrowed for some of the lore and they created a whole new story. I think right now for the future of video game movies, it's not, it's looking pretty good. I think especially with video games themselves advancing so much, we have the series for Cyberpunk. It's not based on the game, but it's inspired by the same universe and that show was amazing that was pretty good and it's also like fed back into the game yeah as well right like um they they saw an uptick on, yeah. on players yeah that, that were playing it which is it saved the game like a little bit but i'm afraid of other versions of it i think it's not the end of bad video game movies in, in general not the end of bad movies yeah. um because of arcane there are a lot of valorant players who are asking for a valorant game i'm like i don't a movie and i'm like i don't know if i want that that, that seems like unless they can also make such a cool story. But if out I of said it. Arcane was going to be based on LOL, yeah, yeah, if, yeah. If if Arcane was to be coming out of, of of LOL and you'd never seen anything to do with Arcane, you'd be like, Ooh, would, would that work? Yeah, I would have been yeah. doubtful. I was, but and then, then but then you kind of saw glimpses of the, of the art. Yeah, and at the very yeah. least, you knew visually. So surely Valorant could possibly do that too, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's the story. Okay, so yeah. I guess I, I was like, there was less investment, emotional investment, because I don't give a shit about League. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, give a shit yeah. about Valorant. So if they end up making a shit movie, yeah. and it looks like the original Sonic before they fixed him, I would be really <laughs> upset. <laughs> Please don't fuck a, up that's Valorant another one. movie. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just don't do it. I'd rather just don't do it. <laughs> so if not Valorant, what video game would you want to see adapted into a movie or a TV show? Like, what do you think... Um, would be an interesting IP. There are so many. All the PlayStation exclusives. I think they're all amazing from God of War, Ghost of Tsushima, because it's all been done and it's all like it's all well, been Uncharted was was of that. Yeah, yeah, that but don't, yeah. But don't do what Uncharted did. But don't do it. Just stick to the <laughs> yeah. game. It's so it's, good. It's, it's Horizon, so <laughs> but it's all the way back in noble time. It's <laughs> 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 the prequel. <laughs> but but that's a bit of an obvious answer. But I do love the gimmicky stuff, like the way Mortal Kombat did it with massive amount of gore. We were just talking about Doom mm -hmm. off cam a bit, and I wouldn't mind a remake of Doom. I, I want it to be as ridiculously gory and crazy, just like the game. There is no real story to it. Sometimes you don't really need a story. You just need amazing graphics that, you know, does, does a lot of fan service. I'm okay with that too. Um, but I feel like these are kind of obvious ones. Um, I would love to see StarCraft come back to life, like or old games that's with a really, good one. with Nostalgic. really good stories. Yeah, that's yeah. a good StarCraft one. stories. If you did the campaign mode, yeah. so good. I want to see Jim Rayner, Kerrigan, all on the big screen. That'd be so cool. I kind of wish. Did you ever play Command and Conquer? Of yeah, course. yeah, right. That and, then, been good and, too. and talking about like cinematic stuff, they were like really pushing forward with the FMV, uh, the full motion video interstitials i'd be curious if someone like dug up there like gdi nod and you threw that back i feel like there's a this this sense of we enjoy going back to old properties reimagined mm -hmm. like what kind of things would could come out of that so the other one that i was thinking that would be kind of interesting is kind of like very stylistic games so it's something like jet set radio uh, like i'd be curious right. because there's so many like visual like things that they have going on in those games if you were to kind of take that universe and just recreate it in like a 
you know, like an Edgar Wright kind of Scott Pilgrim style. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd be really down for that because I think there's a lot of like ideas that are birthed beautifully from games that kind of like feed into movies. Um, I think we should play with some of those concepts. Borderlands would be super fun too. That's sort yeah, of like, that's a movie that's I, coming I would, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. with Kate Blanchett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, Kate Blanchett's oh, yeah. Lilith. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> that would be interesting. But you know, it's super zany, yeah. wacky, and th- that's there'll be so much fun to be able to share those stories with other people if they're done well. What movies would you want to see? I don't know. Like uh, in terms of video games, like I I can't. I'm almost. Like I'm apprehensive whenever I hear one of these things being like announced. Roller coaster tycoon. Yeah, Cooking Mama. You know, it's a story about a girl that played Cooking Mama so much that she became a cook. You know, like yeah, no, I I don't really not being loyal to an IP per se. You know, like of course Ghost of Tsushima would be really cool, um, but at the end of the day, like depending on who the director is, you know, who who who's writing, who's is it a movie or is it a TV show? Like yeah. all of these things kind of affect my judgment as to whether or not it might be good. Yeah. Um, so You're dodging w- the question that, though. Yeah, no, I, I don't have an answer. <laughs> no, I'm probably because, yeah. yeah. Okay, what do you think of, okay, this is one of those games that could be, because there are so many good stories around it, it could go really well or horribly wrong. Um, a story of Link or Zelda. Don't know. Well, I mean, Nintendo, they've opened yeah, up Mario. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is going to happen. I, there's, there would be execs somewhere yeah, brainstorming sure. how to get a story out of this because yeah. I think, you know, it's really... Pandora's box has been opened when it comes to Nintendo IP. And I hope they don't make the mistake that we've seen in the movies that don't work out really well is where they try to condense everything into one movie and squish everything in and they need it to have a complete start to end. Mm. Which I think for games like any of the Zelda games, or there are so many where it's so hard to condense it all into one movie. I think that's where the mistake is. So hopefully if and when that happens, that won't be the case for for this. I I do feel like, and this is another topic as well, but the idea of a self-contained movie is feeling more and more rare. Mm -hmm. You know, something you can watch from start to end and you feel as though you've watched enough and you're not missing out on anything else because, you know, as we push into... You have to play the game, you have to watch the movie, then you have to watch the TV show. Um, yeah, I, I, I do like that. It's it's a real kind of like, you have to put a limit on yourself. How much do you want to share? You have an hour and a half, you have two hours with an audience. Uh, make it worthwhile. So I'd like to see. I'd, I'd be down for a Zelda. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, well, I leak. It's two movies of just the water temple. <laughs> <laughs> and those boots. <laughs> cool. You don't want a Destiny 2 movie? No, not really. Cause Destiny I, 1? They, they, they can't, they can't <laughs> condense it all into, yeah, yeah, it'll be a prequel. You'd have to tell a story. <laughs> it's just Earth. <laughs> it's just dudes playing Destiny. Yeah. <laughs> Becoming real. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Ah, and <laughs> So with that, sounds like we've uh, we've covered video game adaptations in both movies, TV shows. What could work? Yeah. What might not work? And maybe why? And I think the uh, why is interesting. Yeah, because yeah. it's so nuanced. Yeah. There's so much to pick apart. Cooking Mama 2025. You heard it here first. This has been Subnerd on Air. Uh, I'm Kim. I'm Ted. I'm Victoria. And thank you very much. Please remember to like and subscribe. Hit that bell. Bing you in your lane. See ya. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs>